hope, helping other people everywhere. Boom. That's my shirt for the day on our Bible in a Year Instagram Live. For Bible in a Year, 302, 303, 304, and 305. So today, uh, we are actually all the way up to November 1. This is an exciting day because as of today, we have exactly 60 days left of the Bible in a Year Instagram Live. I did the readings for October 29, 30, 31, and for November 1, spanning across several books, and uh, Gretchen Hinkle, Lynn Rydell, glad you're here, uh, hoping that some more are going to join us. I'm going to go ahead and invite some people now, see how many people will have the time to come on to our Bible in a Year Instagram Live for Bible in a Year 302, 3, 4, and 5. My buddy Joshua Paul Borum is online, so I'm going to see if he'll be able to join us. Okay, so I sent the live out to quite a few people. I've got to silence my sound here. Um, all right, so it is fitting that in the readings we covered the book of Lamentations. That's right, starting on... October 29th and going through the 31st, we were reading through the book of Lamentations. And, oh, well, I was actually looking at my study Bible. And the amazing thing about the book of Lamentations is it's, it's poetry, it's songs, essentially. Um, it's, it's, it's a dirge of, of some sort. Um, the first poem is based on the weeping city of Jerusalem, right? The second poem is the aftermath of the destruction. So Lamentations chapter 1 is the poem of the weeping city. Lamentations chapter 2 is the aftermath of the destruction. And so literally it's a, it's, it's a song about what it would be like to be there after the destruction. Then the third poem is... Literally a hope in the midst of all of the despair caused by the judgment that's come against God's people because of their sin. The fourth poem is based on punitive judgment. And then the fifth poem is literally the prayer for restoration. And so um, it, it's funny. I was reading the Lamentations and I was kind of thinking about the Bible in your Instagram um, live that I've been doing and, and doing the Bible in a Year reading challenge. And I mean, I cannot even really actually begin to put into, I cannot quantify the number of hours that have gone into the Bible in a Year Instagram, uh, lives and the, and the Bible in a Year reading challenge. And I can think of so many times when it would have been easy just to give up on the Bible in a Year Instagram live or the Bible in a Year reading challenge. Like, I, I, I can think of so many times when I could have just quit. Um, it has been one of the craziest times in life to be a pastor because I literally came into my church district right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, in the process of being on the front lines of ministry in the COVID-19 pandemic, I have had COVID-19 three times. And so during this entire Bible in a Year Instagram challenge, several times, like two of the times I had COVID, were during the Bible in a Year reading challenge. <laughs> and uh, somehow God would give me the strength to keep doing the readings 
and doing the lives even with COVID. Crazy. And then yesterday, it was another one of those times when it was just like mind over matter. Um, I was in the hospital from like three or four o'clock in the afternoon until seven o'clock at night. And when I got out of the hospital, the first thing I said to my friend who drove me there was right when we get back to your house, I need to do my readings and do Bible in the year Instagram live. So then I did the Instagram live last night, which was day 300 and 301, went to bed, woke up the next morning with a, an incredibly sore throat. In fact, I woke up in the middle of the night with chills, with a sore throat, feeling terrible. Um, and then today, I end up going to the doctor to make sure I don't have strep throat. And uh, long story short, find out I don't have strep throat and it's just like a really bad cold that I came down with. But okay, why am I sharing all of this with all of you? It's because literally today I'm realizing um, the kind of perseverance it takes to make the decision I'm going to walk with God every single day, no matter what. I'm going to be in God's word. I'm going to be praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to spend time with God no matter what. No matter what. Nothing's going to stop me. Um, and and that's, that's probably the, the single most valuable thing I've learned out of doing the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge. You know, because... Many of us, many of us allow the devil to deceive us um, into literally letting go of the thing that can hold us together. And I just got to tell you, with all of the different medical problems I've had and sicknesses I've gone through and trials I've gone through and discouragements I've gone through and everything else. Being in this Bible every day, praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit every day, reading God's word every day has been the thing that's kept me going. And we'll see in Hebrews chapter 3 that it's literally the word of God that It's literally the word of God that holds everything together, including me. So forgive me if, if my mind, if I'm not like really going 100 miles an hour like I normally am, if I'm not all over it today, it is because I literally was in and out of the hospital yesterday, did the Bible in a year yesterday after getting out of the hospital, um, and then woke up in the middle of the night with a sore throat, chills, <laughs> had to go to the doctor today to make sure I didn't have strep throat. I didn't. Thank God I did not test positive for COVID a fourth time. Um, but here I am anyway. Bible in a Year, Instagram Live, 302, 3, 4, and 5. And um, I'm caught up to November 1 at this point. And in the next two days, um, by God's grace, I'm going to be completely caught up with all of my readings um, and with all of the Instagram lives, we will be right on target. And if you can believe it, there's only 60 days left of the Bible in a Year reading challenge. 60 days left, and we will be hitting the end of 2022, and we will have read the entire Bible in a year. There will be Instagram lives commentary for every single one of those days. It's totally crazy. We made it. We made it. We're going to make it. We're going to keep on pressing on to the finish line. And um, there was a couple of verses in the book. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> As you can see, I'm battling <clears throat> a gnarly cold. 
But there was a couple of verses. In Lamentations that really stuck out to me. Listen to this. Lamentations chapter 1 verse 2. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she has no one to comfort her. All of her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Friends, Jerusalem, the people of Israel turned to other nations, to their gods, and they made friends with people who were not truly their friends. And, you know, in the context of what I was sharing about all of the trials that have happened with my health and with my life in this last year of trying to do the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge and all the Instagram Lives, and persevering and pressing through it, why am I persevering and pressing through to spend time in God's Word every day and pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Because... Jesus is the one friend who will never betray me. And if there's one thing that I've learned in my experience in life, the friends who have led me to do things that are against God's will, the, the friends that have, have deceived me into sinful behaviors and stuff when I was younger, when I got in trouble, when judgment came, None of them were there for me, right? And it says, she weeps bitterly in the night, and all of her friends have dealt treacherously with her. The people who were her friends have now become her enemies. And this is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 1. And as I was mentioning to you, uh, the book of Lamentations, chapter 1, is a chapter which literally is a song of how bitter the punishment of Jerusalem really was when the city was destroyed, right? Um, and then um, Lamentations 1 and 2 are like this entire funeral dirge, right? But right in the middle of the book of Lamentations, Lamentations chapter 3, we see a song of hope, right? And what I think is beautiful about this is when we are suffering the consequences of sin in our lives, it's very hard to be grateful. Can anyone else relate to this? But... The consequences, the fact that God is gracious and good enough to allow us to suffer the consequences of sin, when we choose sin, he allows us to suffer separation from him. He allows us to suffer the consequences for our decisions. And we don't usually think so at the time, but God allowing us to suffer the consequences of our decision to follow the enemy rather than giving our lives to God is the most loving and kind thing he can do. Why? Because it's seeing the reality of sin and death. It's realizing that the devil is a deceiver who only has one parlor trick and that's giving us death. It's God allowing us to realize the situation we're in while there's still a chance to repent. That makes it possible for us to turn away from the, the devil who's leading us down the broad highway to destruction back to God, who is the way, the truth, and eternal life for all who put their faith in him, right? And so in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 17, it says, My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, my endurance has perished. So has my hope from the Lord. So literally, this is the lowest of the lows of the lows of the lows of the book of Lamentations, right? He's forgotten what happiness is. And he says, my endurance has perished. And so has my hope from the Lord. And friends, there have been moments in my life when I felt no hope. But I want to point out something about my t-shirt. This this t-shirt says hope. 
helping other people everywhere. Okay, one of the things that I realize from my own personal experience is this. I have many times come to the place where I forgot what happiness was, where I felt like I had no more endurance or ability to keep going, and really I felt like there was no hope. And I'm going to tell you, in those times when I get that low, it's usually because I'm focusing on myself. It's usually because I'm focusing on my own trials, my own struggles, my own problems. And what I love about this t-shirt that was given to me at a week of prayer, helping other people everywhere, is what HOPE stands for in their acronym. And here's the thing. When I shift my eyes from looking on my own self, my own disappointments, my own discouragements, my own sicknesses and setbacks, and I start focusing on others, then my hope is restored. And and what does the Book of Lamentations say? It literally, the Book of Lamentations literally says this. It says, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will place my hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul who seeks him. And so essentially, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 is saying, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every single morning. And then in Lamentations 3, verses 55 through 60, It says, I called on your name, O Lord, from the depths of the pit of despair, you heard my plea. Do not close your ear to me, to my cry for help, O God. You came near when I called on you. You said, do not fear. And and I I picked these three verses, um, Lamentations 3, 55, 56, and 57, because I feel like that's right where I'm at. Calling on the name of the Lord. From the depths of the pits of despair, God has heard my plea, and I have begged him, do not close your ears to my cry for help, O God. And then what what does it say in the last verse, 57? Lamentations 3.57 says, You came near when I called on you. You said, do not fear. And then in verse 58 through 60, it describes what God does in response to his cry for help. You have taken up my cause, O Lord. You have redeemed my life. You have seen the wrong done to me, O Lord. Judge my cause. You have seen all their vengeance, all their plots against me. Okay. And so, essentially, what this reminds me is that, you know, the enemy may be coming after me. The enemy may be trying to make things hard on me. But right in the middle of the book of Lamentations, which is like literally almost like it, it's a song, it's poetry, but it's like a funeral dirge, most of the book. And right in the middle of the book, it says, but wait a minute, we have hope when we take our eyes off of ourselves and place them on the Lord, right? We have hope when we quit focusing on what we don't have and we ask God to help us to set our hearts and our minds to be a part of helping other people everywhere. We need to move from a self-focus to another's focus. We need to move from having our eyes on the sufferings that are being caused by the enemy attacking us to saying, God, what can these sufferings, what what I'm going through, how can this help me to focus on you? And how can your Holy Spirit empower me to be a blessing to others? And then in Lamentations chapter 5, you see the prayer, right? And um, 
Lamentations chapter 5 is the prayer that God will restore and heal his people. Right? And in Lamentations 5 verse 15 it says, The joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dancing has been turned to mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Okay, so now they're actually coming to the point where they're admitting their sin, right? They're realizing that the reason why the joy of their hearts have ceased and their dancing has come to an end is because they've chosen separation from God. And then it says, For this our heart has become sick, for this thing our eyes have grown dim. For Mount Zion which lies desolate, and jackals prowl over it. And then it reminds us at the end what God's going to do in response. But you, O Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures to all generations. Why do you forget us forever? Why do you forsake us for so many days? Restore us to yourself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless you have utterly rejected us and you remain exceedingly angry with us. And so, literally the book ends by asking God a question. God, have you actually utterly rejected us forever? Well, we, we know the answer to that question, don't we? Um, the Lord has not rejected us forever. Okay, we also started in the book of Ezekiel. And we read in Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 2. Um, actually, we read all the way through Ezekiel chapter 3. So for November 1, we read Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1, all the way through 315. And I especially love um, Ezekiel's call um, in Ezekiel chapter 2. Um, Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard the voice of one speaking. And then you go into chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And he spoke to me. The Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me, and he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them. And you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are, they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions. So it says, listen, even though you're going to go through trials, even though you're going to go through hard things, I want you to speak my words no matter what happens to you. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed by their, their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear them or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Be not rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. And when I look, Behold, and listen to this, this is very interesting. A hand was stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. And he spread it before me, and it had writing on the front and on the back, and there were written on it words of what? Lamentation. Interesting. And mourning and woe. However, in Ezekiel chapter 3, what does it say? And he said to me, Son of man, eat whatever you find here. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he gave me this scroll to eat. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly with this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it and it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. Okay, so Ezekiel is eating a scroll with lamentations on it. Except for when he eats it, it's sweet to his mouth. And here God has given him a commission 
to go and speak the words of life, to speak the words of God to the people, even if the people don't like the words. And before he goes and speaks, he, he tells him to eat the scroll with the words on it that he wants him to proclaim to others. And it says that what's written on the scroll is lamentations. I love this. Because it's sweet in his mouth. And there's a reason that the scroll is sweet when he eats it. Speaking of the book of Lamentations that Ezekiel eats. The reason it's sweet is because as a result of us seeing the depravity of sin, as a result of us going through the trials, as a result of us suffering the consequences of our sin, we end up having an opportunity to turn to God. And so why is it a good thing and a sweet thing in Ezekiel's mouth that he's going, he's going to be used by God to proclaim the words of God to a rebellious and stubborn people, many of whom will reject him and not like him and persecute him and everything else? It's because through these words, Ezekiel is being saved. And many people who choose to listen to him are going to turn away from their wicked ways they're going to recognize their condition, their sick hearts, their sick minds, their depraved bodies, the consequences that sin has brought upon them. And as a result, they're going to gain the wisdom to cry out to God for mercy. And as Lamentation says, when they cry out to God, they will find out that the Lord is steadfast in his love and mercy towards them, that he is righteous and just, and they will be saved. So I don't know if you guys ever noticed that before, that when Ezekiel gets his call from God, the scroll that God tells him to eat, which is sweet in his mouth, has lamentations written on it. And lamentations is a funeral dirge. However, that funeral dirge is a song written to remind people of the destruction that came upon Jerusalem because of sin. And it's to keep before their eyes the consequences and the results of sin so that we will have the wisdom to turn to the Lord and be saved. And I hope that's good news and I can get an amen for that from all of you who are here with me tonight. Marco's here, Lynn's here, Marie's here, Gretchen Hinkle's here, Mia, Miha is here, and Wendy is here. And um, thank you for joining me for the Bible in a Year Instagram Live for Bible in a Year Day 302, 3, 4, and 5. Um, oh, I, I was just telling everyone at the beginning of the live that I was in the hospital yesterday and right when I got out of the hospital, I told my friend in the car, I've got to get home and do my Bible readings and do Bible in a Year Instagram Live. And so yesterday... I go to the hospital at 3.30 in the afternoon, get out of the hospital at about 7 o'clock at night, go home, do my Bible in a Year readings, get on the Instagram Live and did the Bible in, Bible in a Year Instagram Live for day 300, 301. And then when I got done with the Live, I went to bed, woke up in the middle of the night with a sore throat, and chills. I was feeling awful, had to go to the doctor today. And yet, here I am. Bible in the year 302, 3, 4, and 5. And then we read the book of Lamentations today, and while I was reading it, I was reflecting back on all of the things that have happened to me during the Bible in the year reading challenge. And... As I was reflecting on that, I was doing the book, I was doing the reading um, from Hebrews for today. And I realized that even though I've been through a whole lot in this last year, that the word of God has, has caused me to be very strong through all of it. Listen to this, what it says in Hebrews chapter 1, starting in verse 1. And, and we read Hebrews chapter 1, 2, and 3 today. But listen to this. 
Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. And then listen to this. He is the radiance of the glory of God, and the exact and the in and he is the exact imprint of his nature and he upholds the universe by the word of his power okay now there are so many things i could say from our reading in the book of hebrews today but this is the only thing i'm going to say the thing i've learned from the bible in a year reading challenge is this the Lord has held me up by the word of his power. Getting COVID-19 three times this year, getting hospitalized, getting sick, having, well, I thought I had strep throat. I had chills and everything. Through it all, um, we're now 305 days into the Bible in a Year Instagram Live. And what I realize is even though I have gone through many trials in this last year that have just been really difficult and hard for me to get through, God has been sustaining me by the word of his power. And that's exactly what it said in our reading today in the book of Hebrews. It says, Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God in the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his his power. What has given me the strength to get through this year, even though it's been incredibly difficult for me? Being in God's word every day, no matter what's happening. And, and you know what? The devil wants us to give up. He wants us to give up on God. He wants us to give up on prayer. He wants, to, he wants us to give up on his word. And at this point, when I was reading the book of Lamentations today, I realized something. I am grateful for every trial and difficulty that has happened to me during this year while doing the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge because I realize now that the one thing I look forward to every day is spending time in God's Word, spending time in prayer, and praising God even though I'm going through hard things. And I'm starting to realize that the thing that's going to sustain me is the Word of God. The thing that's going to give me eternal life is God. And so, um, I'm not going to let the devil discourage me. I'm not going to let the devil make me quit. Um, I'm going to continue to to spend time in God's word every day. I'm going to continue to trust God's word. And I'm going to remind myself that by the word of God, the entire universe was created. And that same word is the, is the word that's sustaining me and that is giving me hope. And that is holding me together um, through all of the things that I have gone through and that I am going through. Um, we also read the book of Philemon, or, or Philemon today. I'm not going to really go into Philemon. Um, basically, Paul writes a letter to a man. His slave had run away. And Paul very cunningly and craftily writes a letter reminding the man that he should treat this man Onesimus good even though he ran away because of the fact that both Paul and this man serve God. So he's, he's essentially saying, because you follow Jesus, you should treat this man who is one of your slaves who ran away, you should treat him good. And Paul does a very good job of using the gospel to, to show this slave owner why he should actually set that man free from slavery, right? And treat him like a son or a brother. And so I love the book of Philemon because it's Paul writing a, a letter to Philemon telling him, because of Jesus releasing you from sin, you should follow in Christ's example 
and set free your slave who ran away from you. And instead of punishing him, you should set him free from slavery and make him like a brother to yourself. It's just, it's so beautiful because it's, it's literally, Paul is like applying the gospel to a real life situation, right? Okay, let's go to the Psalms. I love the Psalms. I'm so happy that I've been able during this Bible in a year reading challenge to spend time in the Psalms every day because the Psalms, they make me so happy. Okay, Psalm 101 verse 1. I will sing of the steadfast love and justice of God to you, O Lord, I will make music. Okay, I love how David continually says that he's singing of the steadfast love and justice of God. And love and justice go together. That's one of the most beautiful things about God is that his steadfast love is not separated from justice because you can't have love without justice and you can't have justice without love, right? And then he says, to you, O Lord, I will make music. I will ponder the way that is blameless. And then he cries out to him, oh, when will you come to me, O God? When will you draw close to me? I walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. So those are the verses that I wanted to share from Psalm 101. And now I'm going to go to Psalm 102. Um, Psalm 102. For me it was... Um, Hear my prayer, O Lord, let, me cr let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke, and my bones burn like a furnace. Well, you guys know why I love this, because I've been going through inflammation in my muscles and in my skeletal structure which have been causing me quite a bit of pain and suffering. Um, and so I'm saying to God, hear my prayer, let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the days of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke and my bones burn like a furnace. My heart is struck down like grass and has withered. So much so, I forget to eat my own bread. Boy, can I ever relate to that. And then what does it say? In Psalm 102, verse 12 and 13. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. And so I'm claiming this promise today. You, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. Well, you know what? Even in the middle of these struggles and, and um, the suffering that I have been facing... I have hope. And so let's just claim that promise today. That the Lord is enthroned forever. That he'll be remembered throughout all generations. And that he is going to arise and have pity on us. And that it is time for us to receive God's favor. The appointed time has come. Let's proclaim it. And then I think Lynn Rydell said she liked Psalm 102, verse 16 and 17. It says, For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute. And he does not despise their prayer. Well, I can say amen to that. 
Because in the moments when I feel destitute, I remind myself that God hears my prayers and that God is here with me, helping me to get through the things that I'm facing and that all of us are facing. And forgive me for my voice being so raspy, but as I said, I've been really going through it. Okay, guys. I'm going to try to finish this Instagram live here, and then I'm going to go get some rest. Um, Psalm 103. Uh, let's see. Yep, Psalm 103 and 104 are the last two ones, and I'm just going to choose one verse. One verse from each. Like I has has been my custom for so long. Oh, here's my verse for the day from Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 3. Um, and I'll just start with actually verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then listen to what he does. He forgives all of our iniquity, and he heals all of our diseases. Praise the Lord for that. And then it reminds us in Psalm 103, verse 15, 16, and 17. It says, As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over, and it is gone. And its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And Gretchen Hinkle says, I want Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Love it. And let's see. Uh, I'm going to pick one. One. Let's see. Uh, oh, I did 14 and 15. I didn't do 14. It looks like I did some of the verses that you highlighted, Lynn. Not all of them, I apologize. Okay, um, Psalm 104, which one do I want to pick? Psalm 104, verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. And that's actually the very first psalm for tomorrow. And Lynn says, how about Psalm 104, verse 1, okay? Um, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and with majesty. Covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot, he rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his men messengers winds, his ministers a flaming fire. He set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be moved. Amen and amen. Okay, our proverb for the day. Oh, and forgive me, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling through it, friends. I'm definitely not feeling... I'm definitely not feeling wonderful. I actually laid down and took a 30-minute nap just before doing the live so that I'd have the strength to do the live, and then I'm going back to bed. Okay. Proverbs 26, verse 20. Through 26, and the one I, the proverb I'm going to highlight is, for lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisperer, quarreling ceases. I used to remember a friend of mine, Jimmy Hampton, used to say, um, if you're staying in a log cabin and everybody's in bed and the fire is burning low, and it's the middle of the night and it starts getting cold. 
Um, eventually, somebody's going to get out of bed to get the firewood, right? Otherwise, everybody's going to die. And so I really love that proverb. For lack of for lack of wood, the fire goes out. It's so obvious. Like, everybody knows that the fire needs wood on it. But so few people are willing to actually put the, the firewood on the fire. And so um, I say that because, <laughs> like, we all know that we need the Word of God. Otherwise, we, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Word of God. Otherwise, it's going to be impossible for us to do what God has called us to do. And yet, we perish because we don't pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives and we don't spend time in God's Word every day. For lack of wood, the fire goes out. If, if you don't pray for the Holy Spirit in your life, then the power of God is not in you. If you're not sowing the Word of God into you, then the Word that was in the beginning that was with God, that is God, is, you know. And, and today in Hebrews, it literally said, the entire universe is sustained by the word of his power or by the power of his word. Okay, so if we want to have power, if we want to be warm, if we don't want the fire to go out, we've got to put wood on the fire. We need the fire of God every day. And so I am grateful that all of you have been a part of the Bible and your reading challenge with me. We are now... 60 days from the finish line. Today was the Bible in your Instagram live for 302, 3, 4, and 5. So we've, we are 305 days into the Bible in a year reading challenge. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. 60 days left to go and we will cross the finish line. So God bless all of you. I'm sorry that I'm a little bit dazed and confused and that my voice is so raspy tonight and... I hope that something I said was a blessing to all of you, and we will see you tomorrow. God bless.